We have breaking news, breaking news out of Washington, D.C. President Barack Obama has just released a statement, which I'm trying to get my hands on. Uh, I just heard it read over the air live by uh, Wolf Blitzer of CNN. The President of the United States is upset at the events that have taken place in Egypt. He is demanding that the, that the Egyptian military turn the country back over to Mohammed Mercy and the democratically elected government of the people. Uh, the arm, he has called uh, Chuck Hagel, the defense secretary, and uh, Dempsey, the chief joint chief of staff, into the White House. They just had a meeting. And Obama's reaction to what has happened in Egypt is that he, he believes it is absolutely wrong that, uh, that the Egyptian military has went forward with a bloodless coup. We also have some breaking news just now happening that the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood and some of his assistants have been arrested by the military. So they're already arresting the Muslim Brotherhood leaders of Egypt. And of course, so I've had people send me emails saying, Pastor, are you sure that Muhammad Mercy was the fierce king and the cruel lord? Absolutely. Listen, just because they didn't break your house down or nail you to a tree or didn't cut your head off doesn't mean he didn't. Because exactly what the Bible said he would be, he did. In one short year, folks, he destroyed the five-man general council. He, he abolished the Constitution. He broke the peace agreement with Israel. He fired 70 governors and replaced them with 70 Muslim Brotherhood governors who went around in each city rewriting the laws of those small villages and providences and implemented Sharia law. He even locked down three cities and put them under martial law. He allowed uh, honor killings to go on in the streets with no reprisals. He allowed Coptic Christian churches to be burnt to the ground. He allowed Christians to be crucified in the trees of his palace where they would take Christians and journalists that, that wrote any news articles about him that was um, in opposition of him and would let them nail them to the trees and hang there for six hours and then take them back down. This guy ruled Egypt in one year as a fierce king and a cruel lord. He just didn't get to have a long reign. But what's coming is Obama's reaction. President Obama is standing with the fallen Mohammed Mercy. And here's why. Obama just gave him $1.3 billion and forgive him of $1 billion in debt and sent him 20 new F-16 fighter jets and 200 new Abram tanks. And the army are using those very tanks to surround and build a perimeter around Cairo and are driving through and are arresting the Muslim Brotherhood leaders. And Obama is furious because his plan was to see a Muslim Brotherhood Middle East. Notice something, Obama's statement, and when I, as soon as I can get it in my hands, let me, I'll read, I'm trying to find the transcript now, it has not been published. But what Obama's upset about is, and I'm sure that Hillary Clinton's going to be saying the same thing, Uma, uh, everybody involved with the Muslim Brotherhood, Wolf Blitzer, uh, who went over there and spent three days with Muhammad Mercy, John F. Kerry's been there five times, I mean, look, the, everybody's going to say, oh, no, this is terrible. This General CC is, is, is wrong. He had no business taking over. Listen, Martin, Joint Chief Chairman General Martin Dempsey, Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel, CIA Director John Brennan were all at the White House. You know what they're asking? You know what the president wants to know? Where's the money? Where's the money we sent them? What's going on? How do I go to Africa and come back and I lose Egypt? You know, by the way, you're having a bad day, Mr. President, because you ordered the Bolivian plane to land. You forced the president of Bolivia's plane to land and to illegally search and seizure a president of another country in Austria. You shut down the airspace of Europe. You ordered your allies. And when they got in the guy's plane, there was no Edward Snowden. What? I thought you said you weren't going to scramble planes for a 29-year-old hacker. 
Well, once again, he's eluded you. But once again, you're considered now. The now it's been released that the Edward Snowden uncovered in the NSA there was a, pl a plot to assassinate the Bolivian prime uh, Bolivian president Morales. I don't know whose plan it was. I'm not saying it was the president's, obviously, but I think it was. I mean, there's something where there's smoke, there's fire. Now the president of the United States is very upset. The armed forces have ousted Egypt's first democratically elected president after just a year in power, installing a temporary civilian government, suspending the constitution, calling for new elections. The Islamist president, Mohammed Mursi, denounced it as a full coup by the military. After the televised announcement by the army chief, millions of anti mercy protesters in the cities around the country erupted in delirious scenes of joy. Shouts of God is great and long live Egypt. Fireworks burst over the crowds, dancing, waving flags in Cairo's Tahara Square, the epicenter of the 2011 uprising that ousted Jose Mubarak. Now let me just say something. Obama's saying that, it's, it, that he cannot stand with this new government because he said that he believes that, that government, that the, the democracy should have its way and that, that there needs to be uh, democratic elected governments. And I agree that you need to have democratic elected governments. You don't want a bunch of dictators running around anywhere. But Mr. President, when President Cabo was being removed from Tunisia, you stood with the rioting of the people. When Jose Mubarak, who had been a good friend of America for 30 years, and had kept a peace agreement with Israel, and had stabilized Egypt, and had, and, and had made it a very beautiful place for tourism, but you stood with the rioting crowds, and you threw Mubarak under the, under the bus. Now, I agree that Muammar Gaddafi was a scoundrel, but you didn't have no problem in sending a no-fly zone in to help the rebels take him out. And then whenever Yemen's president was in trouble and had seven... Uh, assassination attempts, you call for him to go away. But when mercy, when the people, when the largest crowd of protesters in the history of the world, this guy couldn't have been doing a very good job for 14 million people to cry for him to leave without firing one shot. And, the, and the, there was not much resistance. The army's like, you know what? We're with you, folks. We're with you. This guy is awful. What he's trying to do to our country is impose Sharia law. Mr. President, why don't you stand with the people now? Oh, it's because it's not your guy. Your guy was all of these leaders that's been put in position because you're standing with the Muslim Brotherhood. I'm just calling it exactly the way it is. Now, according to Bible prophecy, let me just say this. This is the, the, the there is, the Lord has now mingled a perverse spirit. In the midst thereof, there's going to be confusion, folks. You just wait. And they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof as a drunken man staggereth in its own vomit. There's going to be uh, absolute chaos ensuing out of this because America is going to withhold all funds. And that's going to literally throw the Egyptian economy into the tank. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail branch or rush may do. In that day shall Egypt be likened to a woman that shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord, um, of hosts which shaken over it. The land of Judah shall be in terror with Egypt. Everyone that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid of himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts which he hath determined against it. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts. One shall be called the city of destruction. And there's a lot more in this chapter. I'm going to be go coming back to you to tell you a little bit more later, next video or so, about the language of Canaan and what this prophecy is referring to. I'm Pastor Paul Bagley. Give your life to Jesus Christ. We are truly living in absolute biblical days. Something biblical is going on with the signs of the second coming of Christ.